Hey, there's the second uh, rectilinear motion. And uh, what I want to do is show us the not non-time dependent uh, calculation method. Um, and I'll write it down right here. V dV is equal to A dS. And some people wonder, well, why why are we using uh, that one in terms? It's because you know we know the delta S, and the delta S is 10 feet, right? The delta S right here. And we know that, um, we know V1. And we know the acceleration. So it's kind of like we we just have a lot of information on the whole situation, so this there's only one unknown if we were to use this one. And it really, it really comes down to the fact that you just need to be aware of your what equations you have available to you and see which of the uh, of the few fit. So, first of all, let's just calculate this out. We have s, what I'm going to call s one, or we could just call it really delta s, right? But anyway, it doesn't really matter. S two is equal to I don't know, 10 feet, or 0 feet, S1 is equal to 10 feet, then basically delta S is equal to 10 feet, that's all we need to know. Uh, then we have acceleration, which is going to equal 32.2. Second squared, and then we also have a velocity, which I'm going to call it velocity one, and that's one foot per second squared, or foot per second actually. We do not know v2, and that's what we want to know. So what we're going to use is we're going to use this clouded equation, v dv is equal to a ds. Well, what I suggest is why don't we take the integral of this? Integral of v dv is equal to the integral of a ds. Now, on the left, the integral is relative to v, and on the right, it's relative to s. So what we should have, if you can remember how to do an integral, should have one half v squared, and this will be v2 v1 equals a, and then you have s, which is going to be between s2 and s1. Or actually, this would be s1 and s2, right? So basically what we should have here is we should have, or no, S2 and S1. So now, when we calculate this out, and we toss numbers in here, we should see 1 half V squared still, right? But we should have one, or V and 1 is equal to what I'm going to call negative 32.2 and 0 minus 10 which when you calculate that all out you should have 1 half v squared minus 1 half is equal to 322. So then when we calculate that out, when we toss the one half on the other side and multiply it by 2, we should have v squared equal to 645, which when you do the square root of both sides, you'll have v is equal to 25.39 feet.
pretty simple um, and you can see that uh, 10 feet really does give you enough time to speed up and get good a good pace on yourself so anyway um, I think we should really just jump right into curved linear equations which is going to be the same basic concept um, except you're going to have two dimensions now so now it's not only going to be based off of only x or y it could be also based off of uh, so it's not only one dimensional in terms of the acceleration in one direction or whatnot, but it's two directions so you're going to see rather than things moving like in a pulley system in a box moving up and down in one dimension what you're going to see is projectiles typically going along curved paths where you have both components X and Y taking into effect. And anyway, let's let's just rush right over there and that way we don't uh, we don't miss out on any of it. See you in the next video.